I mean, the DMV, I think, for a lot of people in the UK, it's, so it's DC, Maryland, Virginia. And like, mm -hmm. I feel that those three states are doing more to like break the boundaries of what R&B is now than anywhere else. Like, because if you think about even like Cali, I mean, Marco McInnes, there's a few people that are kind mm -hmm. of still coming up, but then, and obviously Gold Link, Drum, there's a lot of people that are like, maybe not making traditional R&B, but they're like now defining what R&B is. Obviously, you're at the forefront of that. So why do you think it is those three states that are doing so? I don't know what it is, man. I think it's something in the water. Even before that, with like R&B from like Missy and Timberland to like Pharrell, it's like, I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> like genuine, like something about the DMV and R&B music just go together. I don't really know what it is. I've said this before, especially in terms of production, because there's such a varied sound of production, even like a warped sound. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like recently Missy spoke about um, how her and Timberland were kind of breaking boundaries, and she respected Leah for kind of will it, being willing to sing on those songs because they mm -hmm. weren't normal then. So it is something that maybe by seeing the forefront kind of experimenting so much, you've grown up seeing that, and then now you're like, anything can run. Like. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's really special because, um, I mean, like, I don't know, I just feel like watching the crew video, like, I don't know what, like, how you got those people together, but it seemed like they're all your friends, they're all people you know, and then it was like, call the crew, just like, come and dance in the, in the space. Like. I was Golink's people, those are these people, like, yeah, yeah I kind of showed up on set, and <laughs> the homies showed up, and like, yeah, shot it. You look very at home in the fur, I wondered, like, did you all, like, make a pack, like, we're all going to wear a fur? You know what's so crazy? We didn't even know, like, what we were going to wear. And then, like, we got there, and, like, literally the moment I got to Maryland, I was like, um, going like, hit me, he's like, yo, what you wearing? I was like, yo, I got a fur, no bullshit. And he was like, yo, me too! <laughs> we just kind of already thinking the same thing. That's amazing. It's like, you shooting a video, like, because I had a beat sound, like, naturally, I'm just thinking, I'm going to wear a fur, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I guess he was thinking the same thing. I mean, when I heard it, I thought, I'm going to wear a fur. Like, yeah. That's the thing, it's like, if you're really in tune with the beat, I think that's what it says to you. Like. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, I'm a fan of fur, so that's why I was like, yeah. no, they killed it. I don't know why you didn't pull up to the... <laughs> I know, like, I mean, if I was in DMV, if I got the call, like... <laughs> but I did want to ask about your kind of um, vocal harmonizing and, like, your way of singing. Like, when did you, like, obviously, I'm guessing you've been singing for a while. When did you start to experiment with, like, layering and putting your harmonies together like that? Um... I didn't really start off singing, I started off like rapping and making beats. I was like a producer before anything, so I would just like make beats and rap. And I would like start um, like layering my beats with like my voice. Like I would just kind of sing it to the mic and loop it and sample it up and like just do different stuff with it. And I guess it was then I kind of like realized like I could sing, I could do like a whole song like this. So it was then that you figured out you could sing. Yeah, what? Like, I didn't. I didn't like grow up like trying to be a singer or nothing. That's wild. But you like sound like you've got a natural singing voice, so you didn't just sing in the shower and go down. I'm good. Like yeah, I mean, in order for me to, I guess, even be confident enough to like sing on a beat, mm -hmm. I, I must have knew like I had a decent voice or whatever. Like I guess my whole life, like I knew like I could sing. I just wasn't about to be no singer. I didn't That's think good. it was like cool. And then like I don't know. I was like, was be a singer. It, yeah. Rappers get too hard. Yeah. I was like, yeah, forget this. That's interesting though, because I was thinking, I was listening to your music recently, and I was thinking, do you like write and then get a production built around it, or do you hear a beat in the studio and write to it? Like, because um, your music's very emotive. So, like, where do you start? Uh, it's it's both. Like, I, I initially started out like making beats, and then would like sing on them. But then, like, I don't know, somewhere into it, I would get kind of exhausted. Like, a full beat is kind of intimidating for me to hop on because it's like I can't. And then I have to work around production. Mm -hmm. So I like to like work with the most minimal as possible. Like I could go in and record a song all a cappella and then like my producer produce around it. Or like I could start on like a bass line or a drum loop, but just something mad simple. Like the more simple it is, the more like the easier it is for me to work. And then if I hear like the nakedness, then I can just like fill it up with vocals. And then like when the producers produce around it, when we like decide what we want to go in and do, then it's like, yeah, it's magic. But I like that you seem to know when to leave something naked, you know. There's there's a yeah. scarcity to your music that you kind of respect, like when something should be just, you know, silence or nakedness, like you say. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. I feel like it doesn't always have to be, you don't always got to be saying something to be saying something, you know. I find that, I was thinking about to rappers recently, when people leave a half bar empty, it's like the most amazing punctuation. Sometimes yeah. if you, like, you don't say something, that's the emphasis, like... Yeah, absolutely. You don't always gotta say some shit like this. Let it be like leave a little bar like to just let people say. Like, and then you feel me come in and yeah, you, got, <laughs> <laughs> you got finesse with it. It's a little finesse. 
There's like a beautifully like hedonistic vibe to your music, but then it's still very like impure. Like, how do you find that balance as an artist? Do you um, even think about finding balance? Like, no, nah, it's just it's more just like just how I'm feeling. I kind of there's sometimes where like I'll get in the studio and I'll just be working, 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 and don't even realize I've been there like ten hours, and then I like. I like sit back and play what I like what I made. I'm like, yeah, this shit is hard. But it just kind of goes by pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I don't really, to me, I don't know. To me, making music is like, and it's like might sound weird or something. It's like going to the bathroom or like, or like eating. It's just like some regular it's process. It's like, just something yeah. to do. Like it's, I can't really think of not doing it. It's like breathing. You know what I mean? Well, obviously that's why you make great music because you know it just seems so natural. Oh, thank you. But with AM Paradox, your EP, and then Sound on the album, there was almost like a one, like part one and two to it. They they go very well together, even down to like the kind of skits with you talking to your friends, like in the middle. So do you feel that that was like a partnership, like? Um. Yeah. I, I, it's definitely necessary. Like for me, like if I'm gonna put out like my first solo individual project as an R&B artist, I don't just want to have these songs about like love or whatever and then not have no like balance i feel like people would have some unrealistic perception of me if i made like a million and one love records and then didn't keep it g you know what i mean like it's got to be honest i got to be true like i can't like be talking all this love shit and then somebody meet me and i'm just like what's good and they're like like we're yeah, all just, like bitch, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> i feel like it's got to stay like it's got to stay true yeah a, a lot of people like don't like that and a lot of people do like it so it's just kind of whatever but I think that's why it's interesting that you did use the rap. Like, there's a lot of my favorite writers, and even like, you know, Kelly Uchis is, is someone that I love her style of writing because she kind of almost like writes, not like a rapper, but she writes in this kind of really honest, you know, kind of like, not necessarily blase, but it's like the way you would talk to someone. She's yeah. not trying super hard to be like this kind of character, like you say. She's not trying to make this person, she just writes how she feels. And I think that that's how you are. You almost write, not like a rapper, but you write in this kind of like, yeah, like, not faking his love style like and that's really refreshing for an RD singer. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm just um when I write songs typically I just like to approach it like I'm talking to myself or something. Or like yeah, like, I don't know. It's like it's like a journal entry or something like that. It's, like, I don't really think about it like it's some like big theatrical piece or like I have to like use this word with this word. Like nah it's none of that. It's just gotta feel good. It gotta make sense. I like the skits on your projects because they do feel like journal entries too and it feels like, especially it's like, you know, you kind of feel like as a woman maybe listening into like what guys really think, like the condom one makes me laugh for that reason, <laughs> but like was there a topic that you thought about doing something like that with that was just way too controversial? Because the condom one's kind of on the line, you know, like it's not like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. was there something that you were like, we can't talk about that? I got like a, I got like a million, and you got thing is because like, I come from like a hip hop background, so like I'm used to listening to rap albums. Like I came up like a lot of, on like a lot of rap and stuff like that. And like the skits was like the funniest part of the whole thing. So me like being that I, like I do R and B, I can't like dismiss the fact that I really love listening to like rap skits, no matter how raunchy them shits got. So there definitely are a couple topics like some things that I was like, there's so much stuff that didn't even make the project that was like recorded conversation. But I might do it for something else. I mean, that would be a great podcast one day. Like, yeah, yeah. just release one, you know, one topic. Right. I mean, yeah, on that note, what's your favorite rap skit? Like, because in my head, I just had Dr. Dre's Doctor Office one from the Chronic, and the one when the Doctor like see the other one oh, I just yeah. thought of was um, we sang Gucci Park. I think uh, my favorite, my favorite uh, skit is the beginning of like DMX. How's it going down? Oh, I'm the phone call. <laughs> yeah, she. Bitch, you fucking it, and then put the phone down. That's, yeah. That is actually, but I mean, that's the thing. That's not even a skit. That's just the first sentence. That's like that's my, so that was so hard. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Yeah. I think that is a great choice. Um, so I wanted to ask about the fact that you kind of like, and I respect this. As someone that loves rap, you, you swerve rap features. You, you don't just put a rapper on a song for the sake of it, and your projects don't really, you don't just like decorate songs with rap features, where a lot of R&B people have to mm -hmm. kind of gain popularity. But you still done a song with Gucci, which is amazing, really mix. Technically, yeah. you and Gucci are on a song together, which I admire. Yeah. But I wanted to ask, like, if there was a, a one rapper that you would like really want to work with like that, who would it be? Um, one rapper that I really want to work with. To put on your song, so it's like... To put know, on my yeah, song? Yeah, it's got to be on your song. You're not jumping on his song, it's like, he's jumping onto one of yours. Who gets that, like, respect? It probably had to be like an OG. Mm -hmm. Like it had to be an OG. It had to be somebody like 
I don't know. Or it could be somebody like new or coming to my. I don't know. I'm. Not, I have to really like kick it with the artist type shit. Like for, for the most part, it's like. And then I'll appreciate artist music, like a rapper's music, but I won't want to work with them. It's like I'm just a fan, but like a fan from afar type of thing. So I really don't know. I think it all kind of depends. Depends on like the relationship with the artist. Depends like what the song sounds like. But I'm not like not trying to get into the studio with nobody. It's just like I'm not trying to get into the studio with nobody. <laughs> but no, that's what I really like about you because it's like you're you can tell that all these features that you have like are natural. Like you know, mm -hmm. even like the way that the crew song came about. What I've heard you speak on, it's like no, that was just you and a friend of yours making a song, and then Shy Busy jumps on it. Like it's, yeah, yeah, I don't really, I don't really care about like the people be like so lame like trying so hard for the power moves and this is for da 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 like if you're doing anything for like reasons other than the music and you're an artist or reasons other than like this is what I feel like it's like the music should sound like or what it should be or this is the message you should put out then you're not doing it right if you're making a song for the shine then it's like what yeah that's not how that works and that's the thing I think a lot of people they they try to keep changing with the trends in order to make it, and in the end, they just end up with really confused. And yeah, you, you end know, up sounding like everybody else. Yeah. I feel like one of the worst things like an artist can do is voluntarily group themselves in with a whole bunch of other artists. Mm -hmm. So my final question is just based on I was touching it a bit with like the the kind of changes in R and B. But like, what do you think? Like, not like what do you think the future of R and B is, but like, what do you feel that is going in the most interesting direction it's been in so far? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think it's it's going somewhere it definitely hasn't been. And I, I like the fact that um I feel like it needs to like be kind of separated from other genres because so much of R and B has been like diluted because it's like in rap music and in pop music and like everybody kinda taps R and B for what they need it for and then kinda wanna be like, Yeah, but like on the actual R and B album side, like I'm not really feeling all that. I'm gonna just like take a hook, or we gonna get a feature, or get an R and B guy. But it's like I'm not about to listen to a whole R and B album type shit. So it's like nah, like if we gonna do R and B, we create a whole wave. You know what I mean? We gonna like take it somewhere it hasn't been. It's gotta progress.